Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be looking at part three of our NHL trade bait board. Uh, so in preparation for the NHL trade deadline coming up in just a few weeks, uh, we're going to really start to hone in on who's going to be traded, who we are looking at, uh, and really what is going to be the return for some of these high end players. So jumping right into it today with starting off at number 30. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the other 20 uh, players in part one and two. Both links can be found in the description below. But we're going to get right into it today with player number 30 with Owen Tippett. Uh, so with Owen Tippett coming from Florida, he is not necessarily going to be uh, one of those players that we're going to see uh, going to a contending team, most likely a rebuilding team uh, in exchange for a, a better player. Obviously, Florida is in the race right now for a high-end playoff spot. Uh, it really is going to be looking to rebuild their team in order to make a deep cup run this year. Uh, so I do expect something from Owen Tip to be uh, sort of a high-end uh, player coming back if Florida is to trade him. Uh, there is not necessarily a need to trade him right now. He is an RFA coming up next year. Uh, his current contract is $863,000. Uh, so it's not really anything they need to do right now, uh, but in the long run, it might help them uh, to make a trade now, uh, get their team nice and bolstered up for a deep playoff run this year. Uh, this is really the first time we've seen Florida in full force, leading the Atlantic Division as of, as of today, as of filming this video. Uh, but we will, we will be interesting to see uh, where Owen Tippett decides to go, obviously, when you take a look at Tippett. A uh, very young player with high a high ceiling, uh, so I am looking forward to seeing what happens with Owen Tippett come trade deadline day. Uh, so with that, he will become number 30 on our list. I think number 29 on this is Cali Yarncroft, valued in at $2 million, and next year he will be a UFA. Uh, and he comes from Seattle, so this is another one of those players uh, picked in the expansion draft. Now it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do with a guy like Cali Yarncroft. Obviously, Yarncroft uh, is one of those players that uh, has not quite got off to the start he wanted to with this Kraken. Kraken haven't been a great team yet, but they do have quite a bit of uh, young talent. I think when you take a look at a guy like Yarncroft, he is going to be traded to a contending team. I find it, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if Seattle does not end up trading him. Uh, he has not shown a lot of willingness to come back to Seattle. Uh, so in the long run, it does make a lot of sense for Yarncroft to be leaving. And I am looking forward to seeing what the return is. I sort of value the majority of these guys uh, around a second round pick, a little bit, of, and you could argue for a third. Uh, and sort of once we hit 21 and lower, it will be majority first round pick to return players. Uh, so it is interesting to see you now what the return is for Cal Yarncroft. Uh, obviously, he has played with Nashville in years past. Uh, has won on a few playoff runs with Nashville. So he has that playoff experience, which a lot of teams are looking for in today's game. Uh, so it's going to to see what goes on with Cal Yarncroft. So Cal Yarncroft is number 29 on the list. Moving on to 28 is Dylan Strom from the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, so Strom, he is one of those edge players. So uh, for me, when I start to look at these lists, I start to consider uh, how likely they are to be traded by how good of a player they are, what their return will be. Um, for Strom, he's sort of on that cusp of, he's not very much likely to be traded. If he was traded though, it would be a very high return. Uh, Chicago does value him very high as $3 million as of right now with arbitration eligible RFA for next year. Uh, so Chicago might not want to be putting up with the arbitration. Uh, obviously, when players get to sort of choose where they feel, they feel they're valued, the team picks their as their price as well, and then they meet in sort of the middle. Typically, will, is what will happen. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on with a guy like Dylan Strom. Strom is a very good player, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see because Chicago uh, is not necessarily going to be a competing team for the Cup this year. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether they decide to dish Strom out of Chicago, uh, maybe to a contending team because obviously a lot of teams are looking for uh, Dylan Strom like players right now uh, sort of that young player that can be a future uh, player of their team with arbitration especially with the RFA status uh, it is going to be very crucial for some of these teams to have uh, a guy like Strom around and having that sort of tenure uh, and ability to have tenure and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Strom because I'm still not entirely convinced they're going to trade Strom uh, but it does seem as if it is a good idea for right now uh, try and maximize his value before uh, you have to try and get a trade with them because if he decides a one-year deal and then jumps out in an unrestricted free agency uh, you really gain nothing but with that no real pressure for Chicago uh, to trade Dylan Strome uh, but with that Dylan Strome does come on at 28 on the list 
Starting off with number 27 from the Montreal Canadiens, you have Jeff Petrie. Uh, so Petrie does have a 15-team no-trade clause. Uh, his, current tra his current contract is $6.25 million over three years uh, after this year. So uh, Petrie is another one of those players that has really struggled off the top. Uh, and his contract is sort of the main thing that is keeping him from being a little bit lower on or higher on this list. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening with Jeff Petrie because uh, he's not necessarily has to be traded right now, uh, but the Canadians are apparently looking to dish him off. And we take a look at a guy like Jeff Petrie, uh, one of the best defensemen in the league last year, uh, and just hasn't quite found it with the struggling Habs team. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what goes on with Jeff Petrie come trade deadline day. I do expect him to be moved, I think. Uh, unfortunately, uh, just hasn't quite gone the way they would have liked. Uh, but that being said, $6.25 million is a very heavy contract to try and dish off, and it's going to be tough for the Canadians to try and retain salary because uh, they do see themselves as sort of a team to come back in one to two years. So uh, I'm not sure about Pichu right now, how we're going to be able to get rid of him. Uh, but right now you are sort of looking at that third, fourth round pick uh, just with a very high contract. Uh, so it's interesting to see what kind of teams are going to try and take a bite on him. Obviously you are going to have to have the cap space uh, so it does knock off quite a few teams right off the bat. Uh, but I would not never count out the Leafs because obviously the Leafs uh, just got freed up cap space with Jake Muslin going on the LTIR. Uh, so it's interesting to see what goes on with Jeff Petrie. Uh, as he is a very good defenseman still. Uh, he hasn't quite got off to the start uh, but probably a fresh scene will end up uh, pretty much re rejuvenating him uh, and getting him going back to the, uh, his last year self. Uh, so that Jeff Preacher does come in at number 27. Moving on to number 26 with Timothy Lilligren. Uh, so with Lilligren coming out at $865 million, or sorry, $1,000, uh, he is going to be a RFA at the end of this year. Uh, so with Lilligren, another one of these Leafs prospects, you're going to see three of them on this list, uh, all defensemen, because the Leafs are uh, definitely going to be shopping their younger defensemen around. Uh, as they are starting to run out of cap space, you look at their team right now, I made a whole video sort of going through it. They are going to have to lose one or probably two of the three players between Dermot, Lilligren, and Sandine. Uh, and I do expect at least two of them to be traded at this deadline just because of the RFA status. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to trade them now where you're not really going to be counting them on them as much. Uh, you can sort of maximize their value. They're, they're young. Uh, you don't have to worry about them getting hurt uh, or, or basically losing money out in free agency. Uh, so it's interesting to see what goes on with the Leafs, with Lilligren and Sandine. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on there because uh, those two guys have not quite got off to the NHL start uh, that some of them most likely would have expected to this point. Uh, but they are very good prospects. And I think when you take a look at the Leafs right now, uh, they're trying to win a playoff series. That's their goal. They, they sort of need to win a playoff series uh, or, or else they're going to start losing fans. You've already seen the boos come down at Scotiabank Arena. So uh, when you take a look at it, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on there. You might actually do see a trade for uh, Sandine Lilligren for a guy like Jeff Petrie. Uh, as obviously the Leafs can do the same thing Tampa did with Kucherov the last few years. Uh, where they stick him on the LTIR, uh, bring him back for the playoffs. And that would be the same thing with Muzzin coming back for the playoffs. And then just being way over the cap hit. So I look forward to seeing what goes on there. Because uh, obviously if you can do that, you can sort of bedazzle your way through. Um, there's no real uh, off limits for them to do that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the Leafs end up doing. Uh, so that was Lilligren at number 26. Number 25 is going to be Jake DeBrusque. So uh, Jake DeBrusque is a player that has already requested a trade out of Boston, coming up at $3.675 million, an arbitration eligible RRFA uh, as of next year. So uh, we think a guy like Jake DeBrusque, he is one of those players that it has lacks effort. When you take a look at this game, uh, he feels that he deserves to be playing on top line minutes. Um, when he does play on top line minutes, he does look like one of the best players in the league. Uh, but unfortunately for him, if he's anywhere else, he does not get the, the ice time he, he so well deserves. Uh, he decides that he doesn't want to play. He gives sort of 50% effort. Uh, and it is unfortunate for the guy because he is one of those players that if he gets going, it's really hard to keep up with him skating. Uh, he can skate through an entire team. He's sort of like a McDavid level speed. 
uh, not quite that, but he just lacks the effort to play like that every single night. Uh, so it is unfortunate for a guy like Jake DeBrusque. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to him in come free agency time. Uh, he's one of those guys that is very good uh, when he wants to be. Uh, and I think he could hedge quite a value, uh, especially in the last few games, playing on a line with Bergeron and Marshawn. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes about him on trade deadline day. Uh, he's going to be another player to watch. He can go for quite a bit of value uh, and, and pretty much jump almost every player on this list, uh, aside from maybe the few uh, in the top five. Uh, but I could see him pretty much being anywhere on this list by the end of the year. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to Jake, Jake DeBrusque. Uh, in terms of the, in the RFA, uh, I would not suggest Boston to be trying to push it because uh, he most likely will not be uh, qualified uh, and you'll have to try and trade him uh, before the trade deadline starts. And it's very unlikely because uh, most teams are going to decide, oh, okay, well, we're just going to go after him in free agency. Uh, he does have the arbitration, so uh, you can expect a guy for, like DeBrusque to be paid or at least be asking for somewhere around six, seven million dollars. Uh, he does believe he is one of the best players in the league. It's just he has not quite gotten the opportunity he is looking for. Uh, but with that, Jake DeBrusque is at number 25. So next up on this list is going to be at number 24, Jesse Pugliarvi from the Edmonton Oilers. From taking a look at a guy like Jesse Pugliarvi, uh, you could actually sort of argue him between Jake DeBrusque and Pugliarvi, just sort of at two different positions. You see Pugliarvi playing at the right wing versus DeBrusque sort of playing on that left wing. And uh, that's one of the trades I actually did kind of consider going into this uh, trade play bait board, uh, is would you take an accept or accept a deal for DeBrusque, for Poole VRV straight up one for one. And I think when you take a look at it, I say maybe. When you take a look at Edmonton, uh, and, and Poole VRV is a very similar situation with DeBrusque. Hasn't quite got the minutes he's looking for. And I think with a team like Boston, uh, who is looking for that right wing, that top line right winger, uh, you could argue for Poole VRV to take that spot. He's a little bit better for Boston, I think, just in terms of the contract. But at the end of the day, you are sort of looking for, uh, in terms of the Oilers at least, you're looking for some sort of return. Uh, that you do need and I think for Pouviard you could also argue him to be traded for a goaltender uh, although Edmonton has said that they're not necessarily looking for a goaltender I think in the end in the at least at the end game uh, they will end up sort of start to look for him because obviously I would look at their team right now Mike Smith Nico Koskinen not quite what they need right now and uh, I think in the long run they are going to need a goaltender and I, and I think they're just sort of saying that now to sort of dismiss rumors uh, but at the end of the day, they are going to need a new goaltender. And I think uh, public opinion is going to sway their mind, uh, especially because Koskinen and, and uh, Mike Smith right now are not necessarily the top end goaltenders in this league. Uh, and to be a, a high, at least con cup contending team, which they do view themselves as, uh, they need a good goaltender behind them. Uh, you look at back at the previous years, you have Vasilevsky, you have Kudobin, you have basically every goalie going down the list is one of those top end goalies. I even go looking back at Dynasty, you had Crawford, Quick, Rask, Thomas, uh, all these different teams. Bennington uh, was really hot during the playoffs. All these high-end players, or, or these high-end teams, need a really good goaltender behind them. And I think the Oilers are going to be looking at that come deadline day. Uh, so with that, that's Poole VRV at 24. We're on to number 23 with Rasmus Sandin. So very similar to what I said about the Leafs with Lilligren. Uh, we can sort of combine the next two with Sandin and Dermott together. Uh, except I don't think they'll move Dermott as likely. Uh, mainly because Dermott is playing in the minutes right now. Uh, and Lilligren and, and Sandin are sort of switching between the AHL and the NHL. I think they can sort of pick up that high-end player uh, off one of the two of them. They might be able to sort of maneuver their way around their team. You take a look at the Labushkin pickup. Uh, it was a very good pickup. I still I'm very happy with that pick. Uh, and, and I think when you take a look at the trade, it's really Labushkin for a third round pick. Uh, and I think it is a very good deal for the Leafs getting that top defenseman that they're looking for. Uh, and I think when we start to look back at that come deadline day, uh, it is going to be very pivotal for them to make to, for that trade, uh, mainly because they don't have to worry about sort of picking up another defenseman. Uh, we take a look at the Muzzin injury that sort of takes out one of their best defensemen, sort of that top four pairing, and Lubushkin's going to stand in there. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see come deadline day what else they make, because uh, right now they are looking at quite a few options on the back end. The Leafs do need help on the defense. I uh, take a look at every single one of their games pretty much. 5-1 to one lead is not as safe as it used to be for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, and it is unfortunate for them because they don't really have the back end defense. Uh, so with that, Sandine coming in at number 23. Dermot at number 22. So with uh, Dermot, 
Uh, he's at 1.5 million. Uh, he's going to be an RFA at the end of the year. And then we have Sandine coming in at uh, 894,000 with an RFA. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what goes on when it comes to uh, the Leafs. And finally, we move on to the last one at number 21. This is going to be our first pick on the board. Um, this is going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning's first round pick. Uh, they seem to get creative with their strategies. Every year it's been some sort of different move. Last year was Mark Savard. Uh, and it is going to be interesting to see what goes on with Tampa. Because obviously they are very restrained with the cap. They don't have Kucherov on the LTIR this year. So uh, they don't get any cap relief. And I think it is going to be interesting to see uh, if they keep this pick this year. I think this is going to be the first year uh, where there actually is benefit to keeping it. They don't really have... Uh, the ability to make any big moves unless they're going to trade their first round pick to another team, save calf space, and get that player back. That is one of the big trades I've been looking at. I think it is going to be interesting to see what goes on. Uh, if it's like a future consideration, you send your player to them, they get 50%, they retain their salary, they send it back to you. It's going to be an interesting deal, and I think it is going to be fun to see what goes on uh, in Tampa land because they always are creative. And I think when you take a look at a team like Tampa, uh, right now pushed up against the cap hit, although they are a very good team in the long run, it is going to be interesting to see what goes on there. Uh, I think they are going to be quite the team to reckon with this year, especially come playoff time. Uh, and I really would not want to be one of those top three teams in the Atlantic Division. So we're going to look at right now. This is our current trade bait board, uh, and this is basically what we have so far. Uh, we have two more episodes coming out tomorrow and the day after, Sunday and Monday. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, but if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like to consider subscribing, tell all your friends, leave a comment down below your thoughts on the NHL Trade Bait Board 2021-2022. Until next time, see ya.